Well, we've had a chance to fly the Park Zone Mosquito. Yes, we have. Rob flew it. I flew it. Rob flew it again. Uh, and you flew it again. And I flew it again. Yeah. So with that said, though, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna have you go through your scoring sheet. Sure. This is a model Rob and I kind of went back and forth on a little bit. Yeah. For the flight experience. So yeah. We'll uh we'll cover that when we get down to it. All right. We'll start off with model characteristics. Build as advertised, you gave it a 4.5 out of 5. Well, this is always kind of a sticky category for uh, planes that come right out of the box. Because there, there, yeah. there is no building involved. Right. Okay. This so is I a bind and fly version. Exactly. So, so I guess uh, build as advertised um, kind of falls in with finish also. Yep. I mean, if it's really so. Yeah, is, is the model constructed to specs when you exactly. pull out of the box? Yeah, so if we look at it from that, that aspect, yeah, it, uh, the plane was well put together. Um, we had a few issues with the wheels yeah, uh, the jalopy wheel on the right hand sounds, side yeah, it sounds trivial but it does uh they are drilled pretty out of round a yep. um, little torquing and twisting on the um landing gear, landing yeah, gear yeah. to get it to track right but yeah other than that it wasn't it came out of the box looking nice yep it's pretty solid yep all right uh finish he gave it a 4.5 out of 5. yeah which the, is actually high for a foam yeah it is uh, this now they use two different types of foam here obviously um you know, you've got more of an open cell foam on the fuse itself. Loose cell, yeah. Or loose cell. And yeah. then on the uh, um, the main wings, well, actually the, the tail feathers and the main wings are more of a uh, closed cell smooth foam. Mm -hmm. You get a nice paint job on both of them, actually. Yeah. The decals that are put on were done good. Yeah. A few little bubbles, but that's standard with most of your, your yeah. planes. You know, it does look, brick. it's definitely worth the 4.5 because it's an oh, exceptional it is. finish. It is, for the it looks real good. So the next thing is power. You get a 4.5 out of 5. Yeah, I was impressed with the power. Um, it, it surprised me, I guess. I expected it to be powerful. It had plenty of authority in the air uh, going through maneuvers. Mm -hmm. I didn't seem to have any problem with that at all. I, I was impressed. Counter-rotating props definitely definitely helped took, a yeah, lot. Took the, took the torque out, out yeah. completely. Yeah. yeah. All right, the next thing is ground handling. We give it a 4 out of 5 for ground handling. Yeah, uh, 4 out of 5, I, I experienced, and you did too, I remember you saying this, that a little bit of ground looping. Yep. Even with the counter-rotating props, um, I think what we found was, one, the tail wheel's a little, little sensitive. Yep. One, and once it gets up in the air with a plane this small, you really don't have a lot of authority with the rudder. Yeah, there isn't a whole lot of rudder on this yeah. plane at all. Yeah. So, yeah. And, and, and it's, I don't think it's anything against this plane in particular. I think it's just the combination of it is a large micro yep. from what we're used to seeing. So you've got a little more mass there, so the rudder's not really as effective once that tail wheel gets off. So I think I found for myself personally, I had to punch and go yeah. a lot of times. Yeah, just just commit to it. Yeah. Take off. Yeah. Now, granted, we gave it a four or five. So well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Still a good I'm score. Just, I'm not By I mean, it's means. nothing to apologize for. I mean, <laughs> but we did. We, we experienced the ground looping a little bit. So, yeah. um, and tracking on the ground was a little bit, a little bit uh, attentive. Yeah. Uh, durability, we gave it a four out of five on yeah. durability. Yeah, I had an incident where, um, you know, I nosed it well, in. And that'll go into, I think, actually the next thing as well. But you're right. Yeah, yeah. you did test the durability when yeah, you first did. took it off. Yeah, I did. Um, yeah. Getting used to how it handled in the air, um, caught me a little off guard on a turn, and typically what I tend to do is cut the power on a micro because less speed with no low inertia, usually they just bounce around, in which this one did, but yep. um, you know, it took a pretty good hit and held up very well. I well, was impressed. Yeah, you know, we'll, we'll go ahead and, and move right into that, that next thing, which is our pilot experience, uh, flight is advertised. We gave it a four out of five. Yeah. And with that said now, I think what threw you off immediately is when you cut the power back, you lost tail authority. I lost all tail authority. And you didn't expect that on, because yeah. we've flown a lot of Park Zone models as well, and usually they have fantastic glide characteristics. Yeah. With this being a twin, with this being a little different design, getting it up, um, it was a little unexpected. In fact, I think was, you, lost, yeah. you thought you lost radio. You well, at you first I honestly yeah. did, yeah, because I had nothing. I mean, mm -hmm. I, I had nothing at all on the tail, and I, I gave it full deflection on the rudder and it didn't do anything right and it was a combination of it was my own fault i mean yep. it's not the fault of the plane at all it caught me off guard because i expected one for it to glide a little bit a little yep. bit less with a little less airspeed yeah yep. a little less airspeed and i expected the rudder to have some authority to be mm -hmm. able to give me that last little bit of turn i needed knowing i got myself in trouble on that yeah and it didn't happen um when i flew it later i realized that this is a type of plane that you need to keep power on. Keep the power on. You yeah. just got to keep it. You have to fly it, it the whole time. You do. Yeah. You have to fly it the entire time. Unless you're coming at a real, real steep dive, and you do chop. You can chop the power. You'll have sure. you'll have a little bit of tail control, but it definitely flies much more responsibly with a little yeah. bit of power on. Yeah. So yeah, it actually flies very well. I mean, there's nothing. 
I it draws just, a straight line, definitely. It does, yep. it does. And as long as that power's on, this thing will cut, go where you want it to. And it tracks surprisingly through the rolls, aileron rolls. Yes, it does. Um, you that can keep really a nice, keep your altitude through the aileron rolls. Yep. It'll do those basic 3D or basic aerobatics like yep. it advertises. So uh, it has the right amount of power to do that. Yep. And um, yeah, it was, I mean, it flies well, but it's just, it's a, it's a little different flight experience than what yeah. I think the typical micro pilot is used to. Yeah. They jump on a, the T-28 or they jump on the Mustang or something like that. Yeah. They have just, you know, they have great response. And one thing, time. too, that helps you is the torque roll. You know, having that torque roll on Sometimes a single you can play plane. It. Absolutely. Exactly. Yeah, then it'll give you that quick snap when you need it. And this doesn't have Oh, no, no. Yeah. No, it kind of so, has that P-38-ish feel when, exactly, you, when you start yeah. getting into it and trying yeah. to move it's, it around. It flies like a twin. I mean, yep. it, it translates well into the size for a twin. Absolutely. Uh, flight time gave it a 5 out of 5. Yeah, flight time, we got a lot. With that 250 milliamp battery, I was really surprised that we got as long of flights as we did, being that it's, you know, a twin engine. Yep. And we were into the throttle pretty well. Quite a bit, yeah. yeah. And I, you didn't lack for, for flight time at Not all. Not at all. Uh, we had, well, we had probably, what, five, we had solid six, seven minute flights oh, yeah. when we were testing it. And that's doing a lot of throttle yeah. work, so yep. that's, that's really good for a, for a micro. Uh, field size, we said a small park. Yeah, I would say you're going to want some room. You, what you're going to find is in order to get this thing to turn in a tight maneuver, you're going to be in a, you're going to be putting yourself in a stall a lot. Yeah. So you're going to be fighting that. You're going to have to get it up on edge and really rip it around to try to get it to turn. Yeah. Um, you need a little more room to do some nice flat rudder turns. Mm -hmm. um, just give yourself some room. If you're if you're not used yeah. to this style of plane, you'll yeah, give you're best a to go room. to a, a very large, large parking lot yeah. someplace that's empty after exactly. hours, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, or a small park, and you'd be happy. Uh, portability, you gave it a five out of five. Yeah, typical park zone. I mean, they pop right back down into their styrofoam yep. uh, box, the sleeve, and you close the lid, and you're ready to go. Carry handle and all. You got it. Yep. Yeah. And then the last thing is skill level. We gave it an intermediate on skill level. Yeah, I think uh, if you were a beginner flying this plane, uh, all the things that we mentioned previous just now, I think could get to you. Yeah, you know, and you mentioned something too, which I noticed as well when flying it. It's very pitch sensitive. It is. Very pitch yes. sensitive. Yes. Um, which at first makes you think it isn't a good flyer. Yeah. It feels like it's out of balance. Well, with that said, what was the first comment I made that I didn't, that, that caught me off guard? Yes, it's tail heavy. It felt tail heavy. heavy yeah. yeah, and it's not tail heavy. It's just. Um, you know, you've got a couple of things, you know, you can see by the design, you've got a very deep wing, yep. you've got a long fuse, and then small tail feathers, which is how the Mosquito was to begin with yep. anyhow. Yep. So you're kind of fighting that a little bit, and like I said, if you don't stay on the power and, and use the elevator correctly, it's going to feel like it's wanting to drop it's in the turn. Drag, yeah. yeah, and it's not. It's just the way it's Yeah, it's, and it's really it's about keeping that airspeed up, yeah. and that's it. You it flies it. much, much better as the airspeed's higher. Yep. It's not a good slow flyer at all. It's not a comfortable no, slow flyer. it's not a cut the throttle and glide down yep. for a nice little touch and go and back no, up. No, not at all. No, you got to fly, fly it right it. to the ground. Yeah. Yep. So, yeah, that's definitely intermediate skills. Yeah. It's not going to be a beginner skill. No. Um, and an intermediate will know at that point that, yes, I still have control of the plane. This isn't a problem with the plane. Yeah. I've just got to fly this thing a little bit differently. Exactly. You've got to train your brain a little differently. Yep. Yeah. Exactly. For sure. Well, that wraps up our review of the Park Zone Mosquito. You can go to the website at tubefly.com and take a look at the, the detailed list of any uh, of the specs and all that good stuff that we put in there as well. If you have any questions, click on the Ask Two icons located in the lower left corner of every screen on our website. That'll send us a message, and within a couple of business days, we'll get back with you with an answer to the best of our abilities or to the best, best of Rob's abilities. Best of It's a team effort. <laughs> there you go. Exactly. <laughs> Thanks for watching. I'm Kurt. And I'm Rob.